Good morning. As always, I am the Cycling Canadian and I am up here on the roof of my hotel in Dhaka. Welcome to another day. The mission for today is to explore a brand new area of old Dhaka called Farash Ganj, which means, believe it or not, French place or French village. There were French settlers here in the 1700s and they settled down in that part of old Dhaka. They were mainly merchants and they were focused on the spice trade. Today, of course, the French are long gone but this area is still well known for wholesale spice dealers and that should make the streets fascinating to walk through. So that's where I'm going to go. The area of Farash Ganj is also well known for a lot of historic buildings. One of them is called the Ruplal House. This huge mansion was built in 1825 by an Armenian merchant. It was later purchased in 1840 by two brothers and it was named after one of the brothers, Ruklal Das. There's a lot of interesting things about this house, but I hope I can tell you more about it when I get there. Today, Farash Ganj is still known for spice wholesalers, and I read online that when people come here, they often start sneezing. So I'm gonna wait and see if I start sneezing as I get into the spicy area. And I've already heard people all around me sneezing. So the, the rumors are true. I think right across the road from me here is a uh, large spice shop of some kind. And I can feel it in my throat. <laughs> I don't want to sneeze. I want to cough, actually. And it seems to be, oh, garlic. Huge load of uh, garlic and onions in all these trucks.
did a bit of reading about the Ruklal house before I came here, and it's not always easy to figure out what's real and what isn't. But from what I've read, the Das family owned and lived here up until 1947, when India was partitioned. There were a lot of riots all around uh, India and uh, what is now Bangladesh, and they left in 1947, and the Das family has never returned. The new owner of the house, due to the chaos at the time, never really managed to get ownership of the building. And since then, it's been in a kind of a limbo. It was recently set as a protected site by the archaeology department, but it's not clear uh, what they're doing with the house. Again, just from what I read online, there appear to be a lot of squatters in the house. A lot of people have moved businesses into the lower levels and into the upper levels. But it's not clear who really has legal ownership of this house, uh, who has the right to live here and uh, who doesn't. It's equally confusing as a tourist attraction because though it's listed as one of the main things to see in Dhaka, it's not open as a tourist attraction. There's no ticket windows, opening times. In fact, most people report that they can't get inside, that there is a caretaker, but because these people are living here privately on their own, um, they just don't want you walking into their house. But I was lucky, I guess, because when I showed up, there was a door open downstairs, and a man came up to me, and he just invited me inside and said, you know, go on in and take a look, at least take a look at this portion. Um, apparently, it's quite a large structure. This is probably just uh, one piece of it. Uh, here's a uh, courtyard just outside uh, where I'm standing. inside the central courtyard of the Ruklal house now. It's, uh, just, again, think back in history to when this place was new and uh, a family was living here. Can't imagine what they would have done with all these rooms. And a lot of them seem to be occupied uh, by families today. This door over here was closed and locked when I first came in, but as I was leaving I saw that it had been opened, so I came in here to uh, take a look around and you get some more amazing views of this old house. People seem to be living in this section as well, but it's quite old and uh, falling apart. And there's a stairwell here that I'll show you in a second. It goes to a higher level, but I don't think I'm going to risk those stairs. They're way too dangerous to attempt. You'll see what I mean.
but I really have to try these stairs. I saw a little boy come running up and down them, and uh, two other boys just went up to the roof to fly a kite. And they were very careful going up, but the stairs didn't bounce, didn't move. So uh, I think I'm going to risk it. This is not a this is not a smart thing to do. Not at all. saying you never know what you're going to find when you go out into Dhaka. And I'm up on the roof of the Rooplal house now. I didn't think I'd be able to even go into the house at all, let alone onto the roof. But here I am. And even though it's a major historical part of Dhaka, it's really just a playground for teenagers and children. They're all up here flying kites. It's like an adventure playground for them. And as a bonus, we're right beside my favorite place, the Buriganga River. So check it out. And these, in fact, are the launches that go to uh, Chanpur. So that's where I was just a couple of days ago, getting this boat to go down to Chanpur. Time to end my visit to the Ruplal house. I hardly know what to say as, a, as an ending to this experience. There's so much you could say about this house, but I really don't know the history that well. But just to think of this as a family home, it's absolutely massive. And to see it in its glory days must have been spectacular, especially with its setting right here on the Buriganga River. None of the development that we see now would have been here at the time, so it would have been nothing but open land between here and the river, maybe 100 meters away. The size of this place. And the other way to look at this house is as part of the history of Dhaka. It's a spectacular part of the history, and yet, of course, it's not developed as a tourist attraction. It's just a, an old house that's being used by people living here, by businesses, by children as a playground, and for flying kites. It's uh, really quite an experience to, uh, to see this, and I think I was quite lucky to find the door open and quite lucky to find the courage to go up those rickety stairs onto the roof. Ruplal House. Come check it out when uh, you're in Dhaka.
the bonus question for the last video was about the 1971 album that raised money for refugees in Bangladesh during the Liberation War. What was the name of the album? Answer, the album was called Concert for Bangladesh. It was the first big benefit concert and it inspired future events such as Live Aid in 1985 for victims of the famine in Ethiopia. The bonus question for this video is a very simple one. The Ruplal house is obviously a very large house, but how many rooms does it have? Put your answer in the comments below. Answer at the end of the next video. I suppose I should document this, my descent down the stairs. Quite often uh, going down anything, cliff face or a mountain, is uh, harder than going up. thing. I didn't even notice it going up, but this whole structure is being held up by this tiny little piece of wood that I can fit my thumb and finger around. You'd think uh, someone would come in here and uh, at least, at least reinforce that bottom corner. If that breaks, who knows, maybe the, uh, maybe the whole thing goes. I just got some more information from some of the guys up here on the rooftop. It turns out that today is a kite festival. 